Michael Worth here, thethirstymuse.com. Recently went on a field trip to visit Ill Mannered Brewing Company in Powell, Ohio. It is a nano brewery. And uh, join me as I talk to Tom and Greg. Uh, I mean, I think we all had an inkling as individuals that we wanted to start a brewery. Um, I mean, I had a, a, I had a burr up my ass like for a long time that I wanted to do. I always wanted to own my own business, so yeah. there was always something for out there for that. And then uh, actually, Brian approached me about uh, going the nano brewery style. Uh, we were <clears throat> looking at something more large scale. I, I was my, by myself. And then Brian said, well, we should, try, we should look at this nano thing. You know, we looked around here to, you know, Zaftig was open at the time and Sideswipe. Checked those guys out, saw what they were doing. Uh, took some trips to the West Coast and the Grand Rapids, saw what the nano scene was like in those two areas. Um, and Brian, uh, you know, had convinced me that we could keep our day jobs, which became pretty <laughs> important. Um, because, I mean, open a brewery is risky and you need to, get, you need to have some income. Um, uh, you can keep so, your day job. That way you can work 80 to 90 hours a week. Yeah, yeah that's a true story. That's uh, so, so then we wanted to build a team that, that made sense uh, from all aspects of at least running a business. Uh, we brought Greg in because Greg's got skills as a, a bartender, bar manager, kitchen manager. I have, I have front of house and back of house restaurant experience. No, we, those are technical terms. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he makes sure the front doesn't look like crap. <laughs> we brought Ryan in. Uh, Ryan has a, he actually uh, runs a financial firm, so we brought him in as kind of the guy who would uh, understand um, some of the uh, financial aspects and whatnot. He's also like a pretty creative recipe guy, or has a, had a reputation for that, so we brought him in to, uh, uh, you know, fill that, that interesting kind of aspect. Um, Brian and I are both uh, operations focused guys. Um, uh, we, we actually met in grad school. We were getting our MBAs at Ohio State. Greg and I have known each other for 30 years. Uh, so childhood friends from the Cub Scouts. <laughs> and then uh, Ryan and I and Brian, Greg, we all met him in the uh, home brewing world. So that was um, the first time we all four sat down together. Oh, it was what, September? September of uh, 14. 14. Uh, and we set a date on that day. <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be great if we could be open by Labor Day next year? You know, I mean, less than a year. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, which is, it, it was probably ridiculous at the time. Um, but it was more of a gauntlet than anything. So, we kept pushing uh, to get to there. And, I mean, Greg probably hated me after about six months of, Oh, I've always hated you. Oh, I just okay. you. Well, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I, I mean, most people generally do. So, so we ended up. Uh, we actually opened on Labor Day, or actually the Friday before Labor Day, believe it or not. Uh, we soft opened in late August. So it really worked out. Lots of challenges along along the way, but um, we got there. And, you know, Tom said we talk, started talking last September or September of fourteen, and then we set a a one year like date. I mean, that was pretty ambitious and we had we had a lot of work to do in in that year and we had weekly meetings and pissed off spouses <laughs> yeah. you know, neglected some children. late nights yeah we'd, late we'd work nights. during the day and then you know we'd meet at night and then sometimes our meetings would go to like one in the morning and I mean I think in the weeks coming up to opening uh, we were working about a hundred hours a week apiece you know, our, our federal approval came pretty fast, uh, 45 days, which is, which is ridiculously fast. Uh, the state approval took a little bit longer. Some of the stuff with our space in terms of the build out in the city, we had some delays with. Uh, Ill-mannered is actually uh, an anagram of Greg's last name. I was going to ask. Yeah, so, so we were brainstorming names. We must have come up with 500 names. Um, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I mean, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a lot. And we had narrowed it down to five. Um, and ill-mannered wasn't one of them. Uh, and we then sent it out an, an email to some of our closest friends and said, what do you think of these five names? Rank order them for us. We kept getting responses that said, hey, I heard you talk about ill-mannered. What happened to that name? What happened to that name? 
Um, so we, put, we then revised the email to six, and it came back like really popular. Uh, so then we voted on it, as the four of us, and settled on ill-mannered as our name. So Greg likes to say the brewery's named after him, but he's also full of it. Well, see, see, that's what people ask, like, where'd you get the name? And I'm like, and then, and then we'll get, like, the long story and be like, oh, the short story is it's named after me. Yeah. yeah. So, t so today we just brewed our Scottish Export Ale, and it is a brand-new recipe. We just tapped a test batch on Wednesday, and it sold out in one shift. We immediately threw it on the brew schedule because we wanted to get it back out there. Um, so, and we still have some other ones we're working on, uh, like a red IPA, um, a, a really hop forward, uh, I guess you want to call it a Northeast or New England style IPA, um, and Berliner Weiss and a Hefeweizen, both for uh, summer, uh, spring and summer. It's a couple of those different styles of beers going on. Um, so, I mean, all said and told, I mean, we just keep making different recipes and keep bringing back things that are popular. You know, we have quite a few popular ones. Um, our, our double IPA Bitter X has been extremely popular. Uh, and then our flagship IPA Powell right in the Kisser has been uh, pretty popular as well. So we brew those, well, we brew the double IPA about once a quarter. And then we brew the uh, uh, single IPA uh, more often. Yeah, we brew once a week right now, Sunday. Um, so like we just finished up uh, the malt tank literally you know, five minutes before you walked in the door. Um, and then that usually is enough to sustain us, but we're running into issues where it's getting tight. You know, we have outside accounts, we have the tap room to supply, and we like to keep five to six beers on tap all the time. Um, and we, you know, we almost had only had four at the end of this week. Uh, so we really are cutting it awfully close. Uh, but we're expanding, uh, so we're adding two new fermenters that are twice the size of our three barrels. So we're adding two six barrel fermenters, so that'll more than double our capacity. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been great up here in Powell. I mean, I think yeah. Greg and Greg the people of Powell have been have been great here. They've been very accepting, and especially when it's nice out, we get a lot of people that you know they walk here, they ride their bike here, they have some dogs and. You know, it's accessible enough that, you know, people are coming here that easily. They're just coming for a beer when they're out for a run or a walk or something. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a great, uh, great group of regulars that are always here. Um, you know, know, know all of us by name and hug, hugs and handshakes That's and everything. Awesome. So. Yeah, it's kind of like cheers on Wednesday yeah, and Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's getting like to be cheers, like that know, where so. everyone knows your name. Yeah, for sure. And we get... I mean, we have the Tap Room Society, which is like uh, um, this, it's, you know, you get a special mug when you come in here, you get a little bit of discount on beer, you get some free swag when you join, uh, and that's been selling really well. You know, we get a lot of repeat customers. Uh, I mean, Wednesday, Thursday are heavy, you know, regulars. Uh, Friday, Saturday, we get a lot of people coming in from outside of Powell. You know, people get, get away from their houses and come up here. Uh, so that really uh, is exciting to serve new people and have people, you know, really interested in your beer. Uh, we've done two beer festivals in the last month, so we got great exposure from that. Um, but our beer is really, you know, taking off some of our specific styles. We have accounts coming to us asking for our beer. Um, so that's, that's really a, a positive thing. We, I mean, Beer Fest, uh, Columbus Beer Fest, Greg and I, uh, actually, actually all four of us worked Beer Fest over the two days. And um, we saw tons of people coming up to us who had never even heard of us, but they tried our beer and they came back for seconds. And Beer Fest is not something that you come back for seconds at, you know? You have hundreds right. of beers there. And we had some people come back three, four, five times. A couple of ladies come, came back eight times. So, I mean, you know, so we'll take it. Um, you know, so it's fun to have people like your beer. Uh, you know, I mean, we all started as home brewers, so... You know, you know, our friends and family liking it's one thing, whether they're being nice or, or not. I mean, it's been it's been great to have people who you don't know. Like, you know, six months ago, we didn't know any of these people. Yeah. And now they're in here. We know them on a first-name basis. Uh, you know, they're in here all the time drinking our beers, telling their friends about it, posting about it online. Yeah. I mean, we've had our furthest away customer, two customers. First, furthest away Continental was the guy from Hawaii came in and tried our beer. And then a guy from the Australian Outback came and tried our beer, and they both loved it and were, you know, telling their friends about it. And so, um, you know, we see people posting all the time about taking our beers back 
back to their, you know, they grab a growler on their way out of town and they're taking beers back to their friends and family. So, I mean, that's how you try it the first time, yeah, right? Exactly. So, yeah. um, you know, and that's the, that's the best marketing you can have right there. Uh, so, I mean, it's all about an experience up here. We want you to come, enjoy our beers, talk to the guys who made it, the four guys who are behind the bar, the four guys who make the beer. Uh, you can see the brewery. It's 10 feet away from you when you're sitting at the bar. If you want to come back and stand right in the middle of it and have us talk about it for 10 or 15 minutes, we'll do that. Walk you through the whole process. You can look inside the kettles, check out the fermenters. One thing we've always kind of pushed is, like, freshness. You know, like, we had, we, we just kegged a beer on Tuesday, and then we had um, some friends stop in, and they had the, I mean, like, they are drinking a beer that was literally just kegged, like, 20 minutes beforehand, you know? And... You know, that's that's something that uh, we really like to emphasize is that um, you know what you're getting here is is super fresh it's made right you know 10 feet away from where you're sitting and the brewer is there to talk to you so yeah and that's I mean I think that's a that's a great point I mean it's locally locally crafted you know especially here in Powell you know we, we picked this location because you have to go I mean it's probably 20 minutes to the closest brewery from here um, maybe about 10 miles to Zaftig or to Stas and Restoration up in Delaware. So uh, we wanted to pop one right in the middle of all those locations. It's Most people don't go more than 10, 10 minutes. I mean, think about it. Like, you eat everywhere pretty much 5 or 10 minutes from your house. You go to drink there. You know, I mean, I live over in Dublin, and I would come to Powell occasionally, but it was more like special occasions. <laughs> I'm like 15 <laughs> minutes from here. Come on, it's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, we thought this is a perfect location. Lots of a, a craft beer culture here in terms of people open to trying new things. Local Roots, Craft House, Daily Growler, you know, Liberty and Prohibition, they all have excellent beer selections uh, right in, here in downtown Powell. Um, and so we're just a quarter mile away from that. Gallows is moving in across the street from us. Um, so, I mean, I think all of that just shows that there's a demand for good craft beer up here. And the fact that you can't find empty seat in here most days uh, shows that, um, that people are willing to come and try new things. And, you know, we figured, like, we'd have, we'd have to make, like, a really light yellow fizzy beer just to keep everybody happy because maybe they weren't into craft beer and stuff. But we come in here and, like, you know, we even took our blonde ale and made it a little hoppier than most and, and stuff like that just to, to kind of give it that extra like push uh you know more craft uh worthy and we find that the response has been excellent for all across our board you know you come in here some nights and our brown oatmeal stout's the best seller and you know and the and the blonde's barely moving or something like that and other nights the blonde is killing it and the ipa is killing it so people are all over the board and like to try a lot of different things so definitely don't see like it's only blonde and ipa which is what you would think uh um you know, based on you know, what you read and, and when you open a brewery. I mean, don't get me wrong, we sell a whole lot of IPA. Right. But, you know, our rye Belgian ale sells every bit as well as, as some of our IPAs. And, and, uh, and I mean, it out, outsells some of, our, some of our IPAs, depending on which one we have on tap. Um, so, I mean, you see the porter selling really well. I mean, we're getting ready to tap on Wednesday. We'll tap our uh, Nice Vice breakfast out. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's going to be really solid seller. People love that beer. We have people specifically asking for that all the time. And then we took, on top of that, we took a barrel of it and we put it in uh, a Middle West Spirits rye whiskey barrel. Uh, so in about a month and a half or two months, they'll see that too. And that's going to be bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be fun. You know, and we, we just started doing barrel aging beers. Uh, we did the Big Donkey, uh, the beer you're drinking, in barrel in a barrel uh, rye whiskey barrel from Middle West, and they've been great partners, super supportive of what we're trying to do up here as well. Uh, so the one I'm drinking here is the uh, Powell right in the Kisser. Uh, it's our IPA. It's super fruit forward, uh, hop, and that's all from the hops. Um, and we use quite a few uh, uh, rare hops to get a lot of citrus. Uh, tropical fruits, mangoes, peaches. One of the hops is even known for a little like a white white wine uh, characteristic. Uh, so quite a bit going on there, lemon peel. So it's very uh, in aromatic. Uh, we dry hop it very heavily. And then it's got a nice, uh, uh, not a heavy malt, malt backbone to it. Um, we dry it out pretty well. Uh, so it definitely features the hops more, more than anything. 
uh, but it, it's smooth and easy drinking. It's not a super overly bitter IPA. It's 67 IBUs and 6.9%. So it's probably a bit more towards a balanced IPA than a, than a, than a hoppy IPA. And then, exactly, and the, and the hop profile that we put in there uh, tends to lend more towards uh, uh, approachable drinkability. We have a lot of people come in here and they're maybe not huge IPA people, but they like them occasionally. They try ours and, you know, they're ordering seconds because uh, they like this one. Now, we don't get me wrong, we make the, the big bitter guys too and, and, you know, with the traditional sea hops and stuff like that. But this one's kind of our uh, little out there one. And the hops are, you know, hard to get for, for most breweries, but because we're so small, we're able to get them and, and make small batches of this stuff, which is a huge advantage for us being only three barrels. We can get a little more creative with those things, whereas some of the bigger guys, you know, you have to get on contracts and whatnot to get the volume of hops that you need, uh, which makes it, which can make it challenging, although I can't really speak from experience in that <laughs> standpoint, I, but I imagine that that's not fun. Um, so, and of course, as we grow, we'll probably have to deal with that ourselves. So, but this, uh, this, this guy's, um, I mean, you can drink a lot of it for sure. And it, uh, it'll, it'll get you in, get you in a little bit of trouble if you're not careful. So. Definitely an enjoyable beer. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you visit if you're in the area. If, uh, they've had people from Hawaii, I think, I think you mentioned that in the video. Uh, they don't do bottles yet, and they don't do cans yet, but uh, you can pick up a growler. Michael Worth, thethirstymuse.com. Cheers. Not in command.